the key to a consistent walk with Christ. The key to a consistent walk with Christ. We're turning in our Bible to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. How many of us want that key today? Amen? We want to understand how to walk with Christ consistently. Christ wants to give you that key today. There are many individuals who have started walking with Christ and they're not walking with him anymore. They have backslid. They have turned away from Christ. They have turned away from a relationship with a loving God. How can we keep our walk with Christ consistent? How can we lay hold of a walk with Christ that God gave to Enoch, that God gave to Noah, that God gave to the faithful of old? We want to see that today. Amen? In Matthew chapter 16, the Bible lets us know that Christ was about to go to the cross. He was about to die, to be persecuted by church and state. That same time is coming for us. Amen? The national Sunday law crisis, the mark of the beast crisis, when church will unite with state again. Amen? And as the crisis comes, right before Christ went to the cross, he gave the disciples the keys of the kingdom. Amen? In Matthew chapter 16, are we there? The Bible says in verse number 21, the Bible says, And from that time forth, Matthew 26, verse 21, From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, the church, of the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. So did Christ tell them that the cross was coming? Persecution was coming. He told them that of the persecution that was to come. He told them of the uniting of church and state. He told them that the rulers and the elders and the scribes would persecute him. And right before the cross, he gave them now the key to remain consistent in their walk with Christ. It says in verse 19, are we there? Verse 19, it says, and I will give unto thee the what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So before the cross, before the mark of the beast crisis, do we need the keys of the kingdom? Did he give them the keys before the crisis? Should we have the keys before the crisis, friends? What is the key to a consistent walk with Christ? The key is reveal truth to us. Reveal truth that helps us to be consistent with Christ. How do I know? Because right before Christ told them of the cross, right before Christ told them of the key, he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Are you with me? Who do men say that I am? And what did Peter say? Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, flesh and blood had not revealed that unto thee, but what? My father in heaven. So truth of God, the truth of Jesus, revealed to us in a deep, even clearer way. The truth of Jesus revealed to us and how to have him as a personal savior. The truth of Jesus revealed to us that he is the son of God, that he is our personal savior. That is what we must have before the crisis to come. Are you with me? The keys to the kingdom, the keys to a consistent walk with Christ. Are you with me? Oh, my friends. And if you have your paper, what is the key? Surrender. 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 That is the key to a consistent walk with Christ. A complete surrender, a constant surrender, a daily surrender, a continual surrender. This is the key to a consistent walk with Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's see that. Let's go in our Bible to the book of Philippians. We're going to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. The key to a consistent walk with Christ for someone walking with Christ day by day or for someone that has backslid and don't know how to come back. For someone that has stopped walking with the Lord. For someone that turned and went into the world. The key uh, is to have, to, the key to have a consistent walk with Christ is complete surrender. Amen? Amen. Continual surrender. Constant surrender. And daily surrender. We're going to Philippians chapter 2. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Wasn't Jesus in heaven, the king of glory? Didn't he surrender that throne? Didn't he surrender being with the angels in heaven? Didn't he surrender his, him, him even being equal to God to become like man? Didn't he surrender and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross? Did Christ do his will on earth or his father's will? His father's will. So what was Christ practicing? Complete surrender. Daily surrender, constant surrender. Are you with me? 
It says, Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being formed and formed of God, it says, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, he surrendered himself, and made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. And as, it says, was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he surrendered that, the divinity. He surrendered his, his, his ability to be equal with God. Are you with me? And the Bible says he, he was formed and fashioned as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Did Christ surrender? Did he surrender just one time or throughout his life? Throughout his life. Even when he was at the cross going to Gethsemane, did he surrender, my friends? Matthew chapter 26. What we're going to Matthew, Matthew 26. This is the key of having a consistent walk with Christ. Whether we've been walking with him for five years, two years, one year, ten years, or whether we have backslid, went away from Christ, the key is to have a consistent walk with Christ through the surrender, amen, of the will. And the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 26. Are we there? Yeah. All right, Matthew 26. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 26, and verse 39. Do we have it? Yeah. All right, let's read. Matthew 26, verse 39. Jesus, when he was going to the Garden of Gethsemane, he had to make a choice. A what? A choice. The choice was, should I let the world perish in their sins? Should I let humanity perish in their sins? You and I, should he let us perish in our sins? Or would he choose to surrender his will, to surrender his choice to the will of God? And what did Christ do? He surrendered the will. And so the key to a consistent walk with Christ is surrender. It says here, Matthew 26, verse 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, it says, Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That's what it is to surrender. You surrender your will. You surrender your choice. You surrender your decision. You surrender your life. Not the way you want to live it. Not the way you want to choose and decide. But you surrender to God's will. This is what we need. A complete surrender. A constant surrender. A continual surrender. A daily what? Surrender. surrender. This is how we resist Satan and overcome sin. Are you with me? Yes. Matt, James chapter 4. Where we're going to? James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And when did God give the keys of the kingdom? Again, it was right before the cross. Are you with me, friends? So when should we understand this? It's right before the cross, the national Sunday law for us. Are you with me? Complete surrender. Daily surrender. Continual surrender. It says here, James chapter 4. Again, we're seeing the, 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 the reoccurring uh, text understanding surrender. It says in James 4, verse 7. Do we have it? Yeah. All right, let's read. Submit yourselves. What's another word for submit? Yeah. Surrender. Amen. Surrender yourselves, therefore, to God. Then it says what? Resist the devil and what? He will flee from you. How many of us have been overcome by Satan's temptations? Overcome. How do we overcome? We must surrender to God. Are you with me? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God through surrender. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye what? Double-minded. Double-minded means you have two things in your mind. All right? We must make up our minds. Amen? We must make up our mind to surrender to Christ. Are you with me, friends? This is what Christ wants. A complete surrender. Are you with me, friends? A constant surrender. A daily surrender. A continual surrender. You still with me, friends? Oh, friends, this is how we have a consistent walk with Christ. Where the Bible says, he must increase and I what? It's not what I want no more. It's what he wants. I surrender to his will. He must increase and I what? Decrease. And as we do that day by day, moment by moment, constant surrender, daily surrender, Christ can see his character formed in us and we can have a consistent walk with Christ. Are you with me, friends? Oh, friends. Okay. I'm going to say majority of what I'm going to say at the end. 
But I want us to see something. We must surrender to God. Now, does God want us to walk the path of the straight and narrow path? How do we even walk that path, friends? Can we direct our own steps? Can we know, can, can we in our own self live a godly life? No. It is up to God to direct the path of the Christian. Are you with me? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I just want to lock down these scriptures and then we'll look at the handout. In Proverbs chapter 3, the Bible says we know this scripture by heart. Some of us, we know it by heart. In Proverbs chapter 3, look at verse 5 and verse 6. Are you still with me? Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and verse 6, the Bible says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own what? So we even have to surrender our own understanding, our own way of doing things, thinking things, living the way we live. Are you with me? It says, in all your ways, all your ways, we're surrendering all our ways, in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct thy paths. So does Christ want to direct our paths? Does he have the life that he wants us to live? The character that he wants us to have? Before the plan of salvation, before sin even began, there was a plan of salvation, a plan of redemption. He has the character he wants us to attain to, but we must surrender to that. Are you with me, friends? In all our ways, acknowledge him. He will do what? Direct our paths. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10 now. Jeremiah chapter 10, the Bible says he shall direct our path. Why? Because the Bible lets us know that we cannot direct our path. When we think that we can live life the way we want to live life, we end up making bad decisions, being in bad situations, and we find ourselves far from God, and we find ourselves lost. We find ourselves corrupt. We find ourselves uh, uh, filled with sin, and we must surrender to Christ, surrender to Christ, that he may direct our path. Are you with me? How many of us think that our ways are better than God's ways? And that's how we come off the path. Are you with me, friends? This is why we come off the path. And so we must surrender to Christ, trust in Christ with all our ways so that he can do what? Direct our path. Jeremiah chapter 10. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Jeremiah chapter 10. Oh, I think I may be giving you the wrong verse here. Jeremiah chapter 10. All right. Let's look at verse... All right, I think I may be giving you the wrong verse here, but I want to make sure that I give you the right verse, amen? Yeah. All right, all right, let me see here. Jeremiah, give me a few moments here. Oh. All right, you know, the verse is not coming to me, but the Bible plainly says that it's not for man to direct his path. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, it's not coming to me right now, but... Okay, as a matter of fact, it's right here. Praise God. Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for directing my eyes to the right scripture. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter 10. Are we there? Yes. Verse 23. It says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man to, that walketh to direct his what? Steps. So can we, can we walk with Christ in our own selves? No, it's not in man. We must surrender to God so that he can do what? Direct our paths. And this is the key that we must have before the cross. Amen? This is the key that Christ wants to give to us before the cross. Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? We must know who Jesus is for ourselves before the cross. We must know how to have a consistent walk with Christ before the cross, before the national Sunday law comes to us. Are you with me, friends? Oh, friends. So as we look at surrender, I want us to look at the book Steps of Christ. What book? Because that book is a treasure, a treasure of truth. That book is a gem that reveals to us the keys of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, we read Matthew chapter 16 about Jesus saying he wants to give us the keys of what? The kingdom. Now, let me give you from the spirit of prophecy what the keys of the kingdom are. All right. Listen, it's not in your handout. Christian Education, page 74, paragraph 1. Christian Education, page 74, paragraph 1. It says, Christ revealed to men the fact that strictest adherence to ceremony and form would not save them. For the kingdom of God was spiritual in its nature. Christ came to the world to sow it with truth. It, then it says, he held the truth. It says, then he held the keys to all the treasures of wisdom. 
and, and was able to open doors of science and revealed undiscovered stores of knowledge where, where it is essential to salvation. So what are the keys? It is the truth that is essential to what? Salvation. Is a consistent Christian life essential to salvation? Yeah. Yes. So these are the keys that Christ wants to reveal to us. And then she even tells us what the keys are. Same, same exact paragraph. Christian Education, page 71, paragraph paragraph 74, paragraph 1. It says this. He urged upon men the necessity of prayer and repentance and confession and abandonment of sin. So what? Prayer, confession, repentance, and leaving sin alone. Where do we find those chapters? In the book Steps to Christ. So the book Steps to Christ are the keys to having a consistent walk with Christ. And we must receive these keys before the crisis comes. Are you with me? Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, friends. But many don't understand the purpose of Steps to Christ. Many, we have these books, but we don't understand it. We give it to those on the outside. We give it to those in the world. We say, read it just to be converted and come in. But we don't understand it, my friends. Are you with me? You know, I look at Steps to Christ before like I look at cooking. I didn't know how to cook before, right? <laughs> Years ago, I didn't know how to cook. And I would look at these seasonings, whether it be curry seasoning, turmeric seasoning, uh, salt with garlic powder, onion powder, uh, salt and pepper, cayenne, you name it. List. List goes on of different seasonings. Ginger. And I would look at these seasonings. I, would, I didn't know what to do with it. Are you with me? I just look at it. It was useless to me. But when I understood the purpose of the seasoning, it, it had a purpose. The purpose was to make the food taste good. Amen? Amen. So when, now that I understand the purpose, now these seasonings make sense. Correct? In the book Steps of Christ, we have these chapters. God's love for man, repentance, confession, consecration, faith and acceptance, uh, rejoicing in the Lord, uh, the, the work and the life. The list goes on. Growing up into Christ. But all of these chapters are like seasonings. And someone that does not know the purpose or know how to cook, they just look at these chapters and think, okay, let me just read this one day as a devotional. I'll put it down. Let me just read this, put it down. No, my friends. These chapters have a, a direct purpose. Are you with me? Amen. We want to see. What is the purpose for all of these things? Because these, this, these, this book has the keys of the kingdom. Are you with me, friends? Are you with me? Yeah. All right. What is the purpose of Sets of Christ? Now, many Sets of Christ books, you won't find the purpose. Want, want to know why? Because many books, there's so many different covers. There's so many different uh, pictures. There's so many different um, uh, 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 pamphlets of Sets of Christ. And they remove the introduction. They remove the foreword. Some, sometimes you read one introduction and it's different than the introduction that Sister White herself wrote. Did you know that? Did you know that in this book I have right now, and I'm not knocking this book, I love the, the, the book, but there's no introduction in this book? None. But did you know Ellen White wrote an introduction? And when we see the introduction, then we can understand what is the purpose of Steps of Christ. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then every single chapter will make sense. Are you with me? So what is the purpose of Steps of Christ? Notice what this says now. Steps of Christ Page 5, paragraph 3. This is in the foreword of the original writings of Sister White. This is Sets of Christ. Page 5, paragraph 3. It says this on your handout. It says the title of the book tells its mission. It points the reader to Jesus Christ as the only one who is able to meet the needs of the soul. It directs. Can we direct our step? No, Christ does it. Amen. It directs the feet of the doubting. So if you're doubting your relationship with Christ, if you're doubting salvation, if you're doubting whether God loves you, or if you can be saved, that this book is for you. Amen? It also says it directs the feet of the doubting and the halting. What does halt mean? Stop. So for those who stop walking with Christ, this book is for you. Are you with me? For those that are doubting salvation and for those who stop walking with Christ, this book shows us how to have a consistent relationship with the Lord. Amen? It says, it directs the feet of the doubting, doubting and haunting to a pathway of peace. It leads the seeker after righteousness and wholeness of character. That's what I want. Do you want that too? Amen? Amen. It says, it says, step by step along the way of Christian living to that experience where he can know, not guess, no, not feel. No, he will know the fullness of blessing, which is found where? In the complete surrender of self. So what is the purpose of Sex of Christ? Talk to me. It's to get us to a point of what? Complete surrender of what? Self. 
now that we understand the purpose, this book is going to mean so much to you now. Are you with me? Now that we understand the purpose, it says, it reveals to him the what? The secret to what? Vic Do we want victory over sin? Yeah. Must we gain victory over sin before Christ comes? Yeah. So this book reveals how to have victory over sin. Are you with me, friends? Yeah. Let's read. It reveals to him the secret, the key to unlock it, the secret of victory as it unfolds the simplicity of the saving grace and keeping power of the great friend of all mankind. So Christ loves us. He wants us to be his friends. Amen. He wants to have a personal relationship with us. Even those who backslid, it's for them that they can come back into a consistent walk with Christ. The book Steps of Christ is to teach us how to have a complete what? Surrender of self. Are you with me, friends? Now, now that we understand the purpose of the book, I said, okay, if the purpose of the book is to lead me to complete surrender of self, that means I want to find every time it says surrender. Right? I found that it said surrender five times. And that introduction was included. Are you with me? Five times. There's 13 chapters. Are you with me? God's love for man. I'll just read it to you. God's love for man, the sinner's need of Christ, repentance, confession, consecration, faith and acceptance, the test of discipleship, growing up into Christ, the work and the life, a knowledge of God, the privilege of prayer, what to do with doubt, and rejoicing in the Lord. Though there's 13 chapters, it says surrender only five times. Are you with me? So now that we understand that, look at this now. The first, the, the first time in the book itself now, outside of the introduction, that it says surrender, notice what it says now, under the chapter consecration. Sign your hand out. Sign your hand out. Steps of Christ, 41, paragraph 1. 47, paragraph 1, rather. Steps of Christ, it says 47, paragraph 1. You still with me? All right, let's read. Many are inquiring how to make the surrender of myself to God. Many are wondering, how can I give myself to God? Are you with me? You, are, you desire to give yourself to him, but you are weak in more power. Is that us? Weak? In slavery to doubt. Is that us, friends? Written for us. And controlled by habits of life of sin. They're not walking with Jesus because they're controlled. Are you with me? It says, your promises and resolutions are like ropes of sand. We make promises and we break them. You cannot control your thoughts, your impulses, your affections, the knowledge of your broken promises and forfeited pledges weaken your confidence in your sincerity and causes you to feel that God cannot accept you, but you need not what? Don't give up. Don't despair. Don't lose hope. Are you with me? Don't lose hope. What you need to understand is the true force of the will. All right. That Jesus prayed, not my will, but thy will. He surrendered. It says, this is the governing power of the nature of man. The power of decision or the power of choice. Everything depends on the right action of the will. That's a choice. The power of choice God has given to men. It is theirs to what? Exercise. Choice. God can't choose for us. We must choose. Amen. It says, you cannot change your heart. You cannot of yourself give it, give uh, to God its affections. But you can what? choose so how do we surrender it is choosing that makes sense are you with me so how do we surrender it's simply making a choice are you with me all right it says but you can choose him you can give him your will watch this now and he will then work in you to will and to do according to what his good pleasure. It says, and thus your whole nature will be brought not under the control of Satan anymore, but under the control of the spirit of Christ. And your affections will be centered upon him and your thoughts will be in harmony with what? With him. Brothers and sisters, listen. The Bible lets us know that faith without works is dead. Amen? Amen. But listen, whose faith is it? It's our faith. We must exercise our faith. Amen? Now whose work is it? Talk to me. God's work. So we surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you with me, friends? Yeah. Let me tell you something. We're not here because we're perfect. We're here because we need the working of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Amen. When I get on my knees and pray, I don't pray because I'm perfect. I pray because I need the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I open my Bible, it's not because I'm perfect. It's because I need the working of the Holy Spirit. The things that we do just shows that we're exercising faith because we need the working of who? The Holy Spirit. Are you with me, friends? Amen. People don't want to pray because they feel, oh, I'm too sinful. That's why you need to pray. Because Christ can now work in you as you pray. Are you with me, friends? Amen. 
This book is how we remain consistent in our walk with Christ. It's our faith. It's his word. Are you with me? Now, even if the Holy Spirit begins to work in us, because the Holy Spirit will talk to us as we surrender. Holy Spirit will tell us, change this, eat this, don't eat that, stop doing this, stop doing that, take that off, put that on. Are you with me? It's still his work. Right? Because he works in us both to will and to do of his what? Good pleasure. And we work out what Christ works in. It's because he's working in us that changes are made. It's because he's working in us that we surrender different things. It's because he's working in us that we surrender diet and dress and amusement and, and companionship. And the list goes on. Are you with me? You know what I notice is that in Adventism, and not just in Adventism, but all over Christianity, I'm seeing that we call people to surrender things, items, right? They surrender those items. But because they haven't learned how to surrender themselves to God, right? Just a matter of time, they put back on those items. And they leave. Are you with me? This book is to lead our hearts into a surrender to God. Are you with me? So when you pray, brothers and sisters, oh, we'll come to this. But when you pray, when you study the Bible, you're not just getting information. You're praying because you know that there's a work that needs to be done in your heart. And you're trusting God to do that work as you pray and as you study the Bible. Are you with me? That means that when you pray, you're not thinking about just the words you're saying. You're thinking about the work that is taking place when your eyes are closed. You're thinking about the work that is taking place when no one's watching. You're thinking about the work that is taking place that you don't even know is going to take place in your life. Are you with me, friends? Oh, that would leave you to spend two hours in prayer, three hours in prayer. Easy. Because there's so much work to be done in our lives. Are you with me? Oh, friends. Listen. Steps of Christ, page 48, paragraph 1. Again, we see the theme. Surrender. This is the third quotation you see in Steps of Christ. It says, through the right exercise of the will, that's a choice, an entire change may be made in your life. By yielding, surrendering up your will to Christ, your choice, you ally yourself with the power that is above all principalities and powers, and you will have strength from above to hold you steadfast, and through what? Constant surrender to God. You will be enabled to live the new life, even the life of what? Faith. So what is it that we need? A complete surrender, a constant surrender, amen? Through the constant giving up of ourselves to God, we can live a new life of faith. Are you with me, friends? Again, Steps of Christ 62, paragraph 3. This is the fourth time we see the word surrender. Steps of Christ, page 62, paragraph 3. More than this, Christ changes the heart. Praise God. He wants our hearts. Amen? It says, He abides in the heart by faith, and you are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith and the continual surrender of your will, your choice to Him. And so long as you do this, he, again, he will work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. I just want to read the bold part. Then Christ working in you will manifest the same spirit, the same good works, works of righteousness and works of what? Obedience. Did you read that? So as we continually surrender, constantly surrender, have a complete surrender, Christ works in us to be obedient unto him. Are you with me, friends? It's his work, but it's our faith. Are you with me? The fact that you're here today shows you have some kind of faith. You believe that God's going to do something for you in your heart right before he comes. That's why we're here, right? We believe that Christ can do something in our hearts. So our faith being here is giving God an opportunity now to work. That makes sense? Think about this on the day of Pentecost. The disciples, they know the truth. Jesus had just left them. They knew the truth. Jesus opened from uh, Moses and the prophets and explained to them, expounded the scriptures. They knew the truth. But on the day of Pentecost, what made the difference? They surrendered. They surrendered. Malice between each other. They surrendered sin. They surrendered unbelief. They surrendered all these things. And the Spirit of God poured out. Are you with me? So what must happen again before God's Spirit is poured out in the last days? Complete surrender. Are you with me, friends? Last quotation. This is the fifth time you see it. Steps to Christ, page 70, paragraph 1. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, take me, Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a what? Daily surrender. Daily matter. It says, each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day and surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be giving your life into the hands of God and thus your life is molded more and more after the life of Christ. Amen? 
Do we see that? Complete surrender, constant surrender, continual surrender, and daily surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Now, brothers and sisters, when we think about that, now, we, now this book makes sense to us. Amen? Now we see that this book is leading us to surrender. But before we get into the steps of how to surrender to God, let me just say this. What is the result of not surrendering? Well, think about it this way. When we choose God, surrender to God, Christ can work in us. Amen? Christ can work in us when we surrender. So vice versa. If we don't choose to surrender to God, Satan will work in us. Are you with me? Satan can work in us. Sin can work in us. Unbelief can work in us. Temptation and trials and the, you name it, unbelief and, and, and rebelliousness. All these things will work if we don't surrender to Christ. Are you with me? How many of us want Satan to work in us? None of us, right? We want his work out of us. Amen? So we need to know how to surrender so that we can have Christ's work and not Satan's work. Amen? All right? Steps to Christ. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but matter of fact, let, let's look at it. There are 13 chapters. Amen? Now, the first chapter is God's love for man. That chapter says, Behold Christ in Gethsemane. Behold him in the wilderness. Behold him on the cross. Behold him dying for the sins of the world. Behold him suffering the Lamb of God who, who can take away the sins of the world. Behold him. And as we behold him, by beholding we become changed. By beholding we can become the sons of God. So the first chapter is saying, surrender to the love of God. Are you with me? Surrender to the love of God. That chapter just says, contemplate him. Think about him. Appreciate him. Meditate upon him. Surrender to the love of God. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't question if God loves you or not. Are you with me? If you question if God loves you, you already are in Satan's trap. Are you with me, friends? As soon as you wake up in the morning, you, you know God loves you. Why? He shows you in nature. The birds are already singing before you wake up. The sun has risen. Are you with me? The flowers are blooming. He's already speaking his love to you. Then you open his word. You see he loves you in the life of Christ. Amen. In the plan of salvation, you see he loves you. Amen. Then you see the plan of salvation that he was willing to condescend to become a man for you and I. We see he loves us. Amen. Surrender to his love. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, every person needs to see the love of Jesus. Amen? That is the first step in coming to Christ, is seeing his love. And the second chapter is just like it. It says, the sinner's need of Christ. If you read the sinner's need of Christ, that chapter, the first chapter, I'm not going to lie, the second chapter, the first half of it is a little discouraging. It says that we are carnal, sold under sin, in slavery, right? That we cannot free ourselves from the pit of sin which we have sunk in. It, it's a little discouraging. But praise God, it doesn't end that way. Amen? Again, it says, surrender to the love of Christ. It says, behold him. Oh, let us contemplate the am am amazing sacrifice that was made for us. Let us appreciate all of heaven's energy and labor to restore the wanderer back to the father's home. It talks about the, the prodigal son and how he can be restored back to God because of what God is doing to save us. Are you with me? Again, it's saying, look, look up. Look at the love of the father. Are you with me, friends? Oh, friends, so when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is get on your knees and say, Lord, thank you for your love. Are you with me? Thank you for your love. Don't let the devil make you doubt his love, question his love. <laughs> Are you with me? Thank him for his love. And those who have backslid, oh, if they would just stop and think about what Christ did for them. My friends, they can be brought back. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. All right. Number three, repentance. What is that chapter telling us to surrender? The first... The first paragraph says repentance is a godly sorrow and a turning away from sin. God wants us to turn away from sin. After you experience his love, after he shows you the life of Christ, after he shows you the suffering of Jesus, now we say, Lord, how can I continue to sin while I have hurt the heart of Jesus? Are you with me? And that will lead us to repentance. That will lead us to make a U-turn, a change. Are you with me? A turn. We must then say, as we pray in the morning, Lord, I surrender to your love. And Lord, I pray that if I have done anything to hurt you, show me that I can confess it and that I can turn away from it. Now, when the Lord shows us, we have a choice, right? Yes. We can say, Lord, I don't want to, or Lord, I surrender. Amen? But if we don't surrender, what will happen? Satan will work in us. So, my friends, 
why not surrender? Are you with me? It's time to surrender our sin. Then we see the chapter confession. And you know what? I said, what is so deep about the chapter confession that God wants us to surrender in that chapter? I read that chapter carefully. And you know what I saw? Before we confess, something happens in the heart before you confess. What is that? Humility. You humble yourselves. So Christ wants to get rid of pride out of our hearts. When we do something wrong to somebody, right? It takes humility to admit that you're wrong, correct? It takes humility to say, Lord, I'm sorry, right? Notice this. This is under the chapter of confession. It says this. Those who have not humbled themselves, their souls before God in acknowledging their guilt have not fulfilled the first condition of acceptance. Are you with me? Humbleness. That is what Christ wants. You know, I was telling the youth this, this morning, I believe the reason why many are not coming to church, they, they look at Christianity and they look at Christians and we, 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 we have this front before the world as if we're, we are so perfect and so holy, as if we have no sin to confess. Are you with me? As if we're not right with God, as if we are okay. And so the world says, you know what? I need to get right before I even come in. But if they were to see the humility that Christians have, if they were to see that we ourselves need to confess and forsake our sins, they themselves would say, you know what? I want to come to Jesus too. Amen? Are you with me? Humility. Oh, friends, and we know when you tell a child to confess, what's the first thing that they do? Hmm. Pride. Pride. So what is God trying to really get out of our hearts when we spend time in confessing our sins every day? It's pride. Are you with me? It's pride. Do we have any more handouts? No. No? No more? Oh, no. Okay. All right. I hope that we can share them. And I don't have my laptops. I can't print them today, but this is a very important subject, and I hope that I can get them to you for those that just came in. So let's continue. So we have so, so, uh, the fifth chapter now is what? Consecration. What is the, is the Lord telling us to surrender in that chapter? We read it. The first two paragraphs on the first page. It is the choice, right? So after you get, wake up in the morning and you, con and you surrender to God's love, you surrender your sin, you surrender your pride, you're go going down the list, you're confessing. Now, Christ says, you have a choice today. What you're going to do? Surrender your choice to him. Amen. Lord, I choose you. Please don't let me go back into the sins that have broken in your heart. Amen. Are you with me? Choice. And even when you make that choice, I'm going to tell you, sometimes you don't want to make that choice. Your heart doesn't want to make that choice. Your mind doesn't want to make that choice. Are you with me? Sometimes. But if you choose Christ, friends, Christ will give you the power now to live for him. Many are in the world saying, I'm going to live in the world until Christ changes me. It doesn't work that way. You choose Christ, and then he what? Changes you, right? Then he say to the man of the paralytic, John chapter 5, he says, he says, oh man, John chapter 5, what did he say to the paralytic? He says, if thou wilt, cho choice, if thou wilt, thou can be made whole. Willing, then wholeness. Willing, then change. Are you with me? Choose him, and then the change comes. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. This is what we need to do to be consistent in our walk with Christ. Are you with me? Chapter 6, Faith and Acceptance. They're one of my favorite chapters. What is Christ telling us to surrender in that chapter, my friend? Oh, he's telling you to surrender your unbelief. When the devil comes to you and tells you that you're a sinner, when the devil tells you that you cannot be pardoned, when you even feel that you cannot be forgiven of your sins, and you get up off your knees, Christ is saying, look, that unbelief that you have, you don't got to hold on to it. Surrender it. Amen? Let me tell you something. If you get on your knees and pray and say, Lord, I surrender my unbelief, I promise you, you won't struggle with unbelief anymore. And when the thought comes or the feeling comes, just surrender at that moment. You don't have to hold on to it. Are you with me? It's like holding on to a hundred pound weight. You know, if someone says, you know what, I'll be right back. And they give you a hundred pound weight. It's heavy. Can you hold it? It's heavy. And if they say they leave for an hour, are you going to still hold on to it? No. You're going to put it down, right? So when the devil says, here's unbelief, you're no good, you're sinful, you can't be saved, and he wants us to hold on to it, what should we do, my friends? Let go of every weight and the sin which easily beset us. We say, Lord, I surrender my unbelief. Amen? Oh, friends, when the devil brings these thoughts to us, don't hold on to it. Who says you have to hold on to it? Let me ask you a question. Who gave us unbelief in the first place? Satan. 
So why do we think we should hold on to Satan's work? Are you with me, friends? Notice what this says here. As a matter of fact, let's look at the third page. The third page, all right? If we believe, if we believe, it says, if we believe, we receive. Do you see that? Under the chapter, faith and acceptance. Are you still with me? If you believe the promise, and you believe that you are forgiven and cleansed, believe. God supplies the fact, and you are made whole, just as Christ gave the paralytic power to walk when the man believed that he was healed. It is so, if you believe it, do not wait to what? Feel. Don't wait to feel that you are made whole, but say, I believe it. It is so, not because I feel it, but because God has what? So when the devil comes with unbelief, my friends, I don't care what it is. If you confess it, you already are forgiven. Are you with me? You now stand up and say, Lord, I surrender my unbelief. Are you with me, friends? That's what he's calling us to surrender. That's why people walk away from Christ. They commit a, a terrible, they make a terrible mistake. They step outside of God's will, right? But how do you get back? Surrender, right? Surrender unbelief, surrender the sin, surrender to God's love, you go back. But what do they do? My sin is too great. And then they turn away from Christ because of unbelief. Are you with me? Many did not go to the promised land because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Christ wants us to believe today. Amen. Just say, Lord, I believe. Help thou my okay. surrender unbelief. Amen? Amen. Oh, friends. Then we see the next chapter. The test of discipleship. You know what the Lord wants us to surrender in that chapter? Your heart, friends. Notice the test of discipleship, page two, top page, top paragraph. Oh, it says this. Friends, I can't preach this. We have to study this. Amen? It's so powerful. It says, more than this, Christ changes the heart. Oh, my friends, he abides where? In your heart by faith. You are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith and the continual surrender of your will to him. And so long as you do this, he will work in you to will and to do according to the what? His, his good pleasure. So we must now say, Lord, I surrender. I choose to give you my heart. Are you with me? Now, once you pray that prayer, you can't do whatever you want to do after that, right? <laughs> right? You, you're doing what draws you closer to the Lord. You're doing what makes you fall more in love with Jesus. You're doing now what makes you uh, uh, fall more in love with him as you watch television or if you listen to music, it's the music and the television which Christ, which, which helps you fall in love with Christ. Are you with me? Are you with me, friends? Amen. The more you do this, he changes the heart. Are you with me, friends? We surrender to God because we want him to change our hearts. Amen. Not because we're perfect already. Are you with me, friends? Number eight, growing up into Christ. That chapter, you read it carefully. It, I have the quotation right above it. Growing up into Christ. What do we surrender there? It says, consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very what? You know, this is a song. Consecrate yourself to God, self to God, self to God. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your first work, first work, first work. Make this your first work in the morning. Steps to Christ, page 70, 70, 70. Steps to Christ, page 70, in the morning. Amen? I didn't want to sing it, but I want you to always remember that. Amen? <laughs> so listen. In the morning, we surrender ourselves to God in the morning. Subscribe Christ, page 70. Amen? Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be. Take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me. Let all my work be right in thee. This is a daily or daily surrender. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day and surrender all your plans to him. Friends, surrender your plans, amen? And put Bible study in that plan. Put prayer in that plan. Put witnessing in that plan, amen? And whatever you want to do for that day, put it in your plan so that you have no plan to sin. You got that? It goes on to say, surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate this, thus day by day, you may be given your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of 
Christ. So what do we need? A daily surrender. Are you with me? Surrender yourself, your plans, all to God, my friends. Amen? Amen. Then we have chapter 9. The work and the life. What is that chapter saying? Surrender to God's work. Amen? Surrender to evangelism. Just surrender. Are you with me? Sometimes we think about our relationship with God is here and evangelism. Oh, that's out there. Right? That's why many don't do evangelism, but they want to pray and read all day. Right? But, no, no, no. It's, it, it's connected with your walk with Christ. As you surrender these things, now you surrender to his work. Amen? Amen. And brothers and sisters, <laughs> Christ is telling us sinful people who just confessed and just surrendered to do his work. So that shows us that as we do his work, he's still working in us. Are you with me? Amen. Everything that we do is that Christ can work in us. I'm preaching because, yes, we need it. Amen? But me preaching to you allows Christ to work more in me. Are you with me? Everything we do is that Christ can work in us. Amen? Surrender to his work. And you know what you can do too? If you have a weakness in one of these areas of your life, just look, look at the chapter you have a weakness in and read it over and over and over again. I need to surrender this thing to Christ. Amen? All right. Chapter 10. The knowledge of God. What are we surrendering to, my friends? Bible study. In that chapter, knowledge of God, it talks about God's character, God's word, how it is the voice of God speaking to the soul. And in the word of God are the treasures of truth that we can understand his will. So we must study, uh, surrender to Bible study. Are you with me? Surrender. Just say, Lord, I have a few moments. Are you with me? Husbands and wives if, 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 and families. Say, Lord, I surrender. I, I'm going to surrender this time in the morning. We're going to spend time in prayer and the study of your word. Amen? Look at it as surrender. Amen? Evening comes, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. It's time to surrender that time. Are you with me? It's all about what? Surrender. Surrender. Chapter 11, the privilege of prayer. There's so much that could be said in, in, in here. But what is that saying? Just surrender yourself to what? That's it. That's it. We neglect prayer because we don't understand that this is the way that God is going to work in us. And if we understood that, if we would pray more, the devil would have less power, no power over us. Are you with me? We don't pray because we don't recognize, we just think it's just words. Are you with me? But it's the working of the Holy Spirit working in us while we don't see what's happening. Are you with me? Paul was in darkness. His, his, his name was Saul. He just became Paul. His eyes, he was blind. He was in darkness. What was he doing? Fasting and did the light come to him? Amen. Was his life changed when he opened his eyes? Yes. Amen. So in the darkness of prayer, Christ is doing something in our hearts to change our lives. Are you with me? Pray consistently and surrender yourself to prayer throughout the day. Amen? Surrender your thoughts to pray throughout the day. You cannot resist temptation without prayer. We cannot overcome Satan's temptations and sneers without prayer. We'll say things that are wrong. We'll think things that are wrong. We'll do everything that's wrong. Let me tell you something. When we wake up in the morning, why do we have to put deodorant on? Oh, human nature. We don't smell good. Why do we have to brush our teeth? We don't smell good. So what is the condition of the natural heart? Sin, wickedness, evil. So what must we do? Surrender our hearts in prayer. Are you with me, friends? Oh, friends. Number 12, what to do with doubt? That chapter is dealing with when you see things in the word of God and you're not certain about it and people will walk away and they'll be skeptical because they don't understand certain things in the Bible and they will, they will turn around and say, you know what, I don't believe this. Are you with me? What do we do with doubt? Just what? Surrender. surrender it. Surrender it. So when there's things that you don't understand, just do what? Surrender. If God did not reveal it, just what? Surrender. But you know what the devil does? He says, you know what? If I can't make them surrender it, I will let them add their own interpretation and bring fanaticism. Are you with me, friends? Yeah. So listen. If it's not clearly revealed in God's word, leave it alone. Did you know there's a quotation me and my wife read the other day? It says that we will not understand all that there is to understand before we go to heaven. Are you with me? If we did, then what would it make to be, have this ceaseless age of eternity of knowing God? Right? So there's certain things that are not clearly revealed. Leave it alone. Many are being swept away into fanaticism, false teachings, false beliefs, false prophecies, false understandings, false movements in and without the church. Are you with me? It's time that we surrender that to God. Amen? And stand upon the platform of truth. Amen? 
I can't, I can't, I cannot emphasize that enough. All right. Last one. Rejoicing in the Lord. What is God telling us to surrender? Sadness. Sadness. Rejoice. You can't rejoice if you're sad, right? Surrender sadness. Now, it, that chapter talks about going through difficulties, going through hardship. It, she mentions a woman that was walking in a, in a garden, and there were lots of thorns, and all she could see was thorns. And she was so discouraged and sad and, and depressed. And she says, why don't you look a little further, and you see that there's roses on top. Amen? That there's pinks and lilies and all these other things. And so God even wants us to surrender what? Sadness. Now, is it a sin to be sad? No. No. Jesus was a man of sorrows. Amen? <laughs> Will sadness come to every one of us? Yes. 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 But if we hold on to it to the point where we cannot see anything else, my friends, can God work in us? We have to surrender even sadness. Amen? We have to trust in the Lord. And that is not easy. It's not easy. But God wants to work in us. And I thought, I, I gave this illustration to the young people this, this morning. You know, if God wants to use us to preach the gospel, share his message with other people. But because of things in our life, we are just sad and depressed. Can God use us? He can't use us. It, it's when he lifts the burden off our hearts, then we can now lift somebody else. Are you with me? And so, brothers and sisters, God wants us to find the joys along the way. Amen? Yes, sadness will come, but don't hold on to it to the point where you lose hope. Amen? Rejoice in the Lord. And this is how we keep a consistent walk with Christ. Amen? Are you with me? Yeah. Surrender to his love. Surrender to his love again. Amen? <laughs> surrender sin. Surrender pride. Surrender the choice. Surrender unbelief. Surrender the heart. Surrender your plans. Surrender to God's work. Surrender to Bible study. Surrender to prayer. Surrender doubt. Surrender sadness. A constant, continual, daily, and complete surrender. This is the purpose of what? Steps to Christ. Are you with me? Oh, friends, now it's not going to be a regular book you just put on the shelf. Now it's not going to be a book that you throw in the dumpster because we have so much, they're piling up. Now it's not a regular book you just tell someone else to read, but you don't read it yourself. Are you with me? It's a book that holds the keys to the kingdom that prepares us for the coming of the Lord. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh, friends, if we understood this book, oh, my friends, we'd be quick to show people the love of God instead of tell them, take that off, take that off, get out the church. Are you with me? We would show them the love of Jesus. If they don't have the love of Jesus, if they don't have the heart change, my friends, nothing that we say to them afterward is going to make any sense. It's going to be like different seasonings, like I said this morning. Are you with me? But when we understand the purpose of the Christian life is to surrender, and that Christ surrendered, and that we must surrender, oh, friends, the Holy Spirit will tell them what to do. The Holy Spirit will tell them, look, it's time to change your dress now. The Holy Spirit will just speak to people's mind. It's time to change your diet now. The Holy Spirit will do that. Are you with me? Am I saying not to preach truth? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it doesn't start there. Are you with me? It doesn't start there. We must learn how to surrender ourselves to Christ. Amen? Closing. I have to close. All right? Look at this. Second page. Second page. What will happen if we surrender? It says, if we surrender, dot, dot, dot. Do you see it? What happens if you surrender? Steps to Christ, 57, paragraph 2. It says, a change will be seen in the... Praise the Lord. Do you want that? A change will be seen in the character, in the habits, and the pursuits. The constant, uh, the, the contrast will be so clear and decided between what they have been and what they are. The character is revealed not by occasional good deeds or occasional misdeeds, but by the tendency of what? Habitual words and acts. So a change will be seen, and what we say, what we do, what we think, how we view life, a change will be seen. Amen? Amen. If we surrender. Amen? God doesn't throw you off when you make a mistake. And I want to close with these few statements here. God will not throw you off if you make a mistake. That's not, what, that's not how our God is. Amen? Amen? It says this, the next page. We have no righteousness of our own in which to meet the claims of God. But Christ has made a way of escape. He lived on earth amid trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived a sinless life. He died for us. And now he offers to take our sins and give us his righteousness. And if you give yourself to him, surrender, and accept him as your savior, then as sinful as your life may have been, for his sake you are accounted righteous, and Christ's character stands in the place of your character, and you are accepted before God as if you had not sinned. Amen. 
God doesn't Amen. view, he, the way we think about God is not how God views us. If we make a mistake, he won't cast us off, friends. He's quick to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Oh, next quotation. There are those who have known the parting love of Christ, who really desire to be children of God, yet they realize that their character is imperfect and their life faulty. They are ready to doubt, it says, whether their hearts have been renewed by the Holy Spirit. To such, I would say, do not draw back in despair. We shall often have to bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our what? Shortcomings and mistakes. But we are not to be what? Discouraged. Even if, the, if we are overcome by the enemy, we are not cast Oh, praise God. Cast off, not forsaken, not rejected of God. No, both part. He desires to restore you to see his own purity and holiness reflected in you. And if you will but yield yourself to him, he had begun a good work. He that had begun a good work in you will carry it forward to the day of Jesus Christ. Pray more fervently. Believe more fully. And as we come to distress our own power, let us trust the power of our Redeemer, and we shall praise him who is the health and our what? Continents, my friends. Amen? When you make a mistake, God won't throw you off. That's the God we serve. And many, when they see God's loving character, they will come back. Are you with me? We have walked away. Last quotation. I'm just going to read this last quotation right here. Do not injure your soul. And this is for those that are struggling with unbelief. You don't know if God will accept you. Do not let the devil fill your thoughts with that thought. It says, with the rich promise of God before you, can you give place to doubt? Can you believe that when the poor sinner longs to return, longs to forsake his sin, the Lord sternly withholds him from coming to his feet in repentance? Away with such thoughts. Nothing can hurt your own soul more than to entertain such a conception of our Heavenly Father. He hates sin, but what does he love? Yes. Praise God. He loves sinners. It says, and he gave himself in the person of Christ that all who would might be saved and have eternal bless blessedness in the kingdom of glory. Don't let the devil fill your thoughts. Amen. That God doesn't love you. And brothers and sisters, today, all he wants is your choice. All he wants is for you to surrender. I'm going to close, but before I close, I'm going to ask brother and sister Meyer if they can come up, and Elder Meyer and sister Meyer if they can come up and sing an appeal song. And then I'm going to make an appeal that we will surrender our hearts to Christ. And I pray that you decide to give your heart to Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to give Bob a break and he's going to, he could sing with us. And after, when I go like this, you can stand up and sing our closing song in a cappella with us. Okay. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him? Come in. There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he has waited before, and now. Time he has 
has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Our closing song is 309. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus. is dying of a, of a disease, of cancer, of a tumor, of a sickness, and it gets so bad and they know that the doctors know it's going to spread all over the body, they say, you know, the only way that you can live is you have to cut off that part, that leg, that foot, that hand, that arm. And in cutting off that part of the body, they save the individual. And the Lord is telling us to surrender. There's something that God wants us to, to surrender. He wants us to surrender our lives to him. Amen? Amen? And I just want to say this as we close. Jacob was wrestling with God. And as he wrestled with God, the Bible lets us know that in that wrestling, something happened where 
his thigh was dislocated, disconnected. As he wrestled with God and even spent time in his presence, every time we come in God's presence, God is saying there's something to surrender. There's something to give up. Amen? Won't you give him your life today? As we close with a word of prayer, I ask that you'll bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, Lord, your Holy Spirit is in this room. Lord, we surrender our all to thee. I pray that you will help us to surrender to your love and go right down the steps and have a continual, constant, complete, and daily surrender to thee. And as we pray, as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, there are individuals under the sound of my voice who are hearing a message like this for the first time. And they need to make a decision before we leave because we don't know if this is our last opportunity of salvation. And I pray that at this time, that the Lord is speaking to your heart, that you would like to surrender your heart to Christ, surrender your life to Christ in preparation to give your life fully to him. You want to make a public stand and say, Lord, I surrender. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand where you are. I want you to raise your hand where you are. Say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, you see the hands? We surrender. I pray that you will take these hands, that you will walk with us step by step, that you will help us, dear God, by your divine grace, that we will not let go of thy unchanging hand. May you continue to change us and work in us as we surrender to your will and to your working. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer and for the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.